In our sermon on the Lord's Day this week, we saw Abram's sin come back to do him and his wife a bit of harm. And we talked briefly about Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8, the law of the harvest. Well, I want to take a deeper look into the law of the harvest this week on Beyond the Notes. Passage at hand for this conversation on this episode comes from Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. Let me read them again right quick. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Now, one of the things that, that, that matters in considering this law of the harvest is we're only just a few verses away. Don't let the transition from chapter 5 to chapter 6 of Galatians cause you to think that some major subject change has happened. It's not coincidence that just a few sentences earlier, the Apostle Paul was talking about fruit. So he's got this, this fruit of the Spirit agricultural metaphor sort of front of mind as he writes these passages under the inspiration of the Spirit. I believe the fruit of the Spirit and the law of the harvest are related in that they both speak predominantly to relationships. Think about the fruit of the Spirit, if you're familiar with that list. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control show up most evidently or fail most evidently in a context of relationships. And so does the law of the harvest. This, this sowing to your own flesh and your own desires, reaping corruption and consequences you don't want, versus this sowing to the Spirit, living in obedience and faithfulness and walking with God and pouring into the lives of the people around you in a way that is empowered and, and uh, exemplifying the work of God the Spirit in your own life coming back as good things. I, um, from time to time, and it kind of goes with, with the role and the, the place that McGregor is blessed to have in this community. From time to time, we get a call here at McGregor from, from one of the hospice organizations uh, that someone has passed away and that there is no real connection with any local body of Christ but hospice would appreciate it, and, and, and their ministry is so wonderful, and they've been so good to us over the years. They'll call the church and say, we've got a, we've got a memorial service day after tomorrow at 10 in the morning in one of our chapels here, and, and we just need somebody to come with a Bible and just share a word of encouragement in this memorial or funeral service in our chapel here at the hospice um, ministry. And I've gone on a couple of occasions and on a, a, a one or two of the occasions that I have gone, I've gone on a few occasions, but on one or two of the occasions that I've gone, I've, I've gotten there 10 minutes early and it's been an empty room, maybe a hospice volunteer setting stuff up. And the time comes to start the service and it's just me and the hospice volunteer. And maybe, maybe there is a, there's, a, there's an urn not to be too graphic because maybe the person's already been cremated. And it's me and a hospice volunteer and the deceased, the remains of the deceased. And I can't generalize about anybody's life and I'm not trying to make this point too dramatically, but it always occurs to me in those settings to wonder, wasn't there somebody? Now I know you can't validate a life based on funeral attendance, I get that. But when funeral attendance is essentially zero, doesn't it beg the question, wasn't there somebody? The, the, the converse sometimes happens. Uh, you get a call to go to the hospital and, and we, we do hospital visits here. And, and um, I, I, I also do hospital visits. And the word comes that, that some, some member of the body of Christ is in the hospital. 
And, and this doesn't always happen this way, but this has also happened on occasion. You think, all right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go encourage that person. I'm going to be used of God in that person's life. I get to be, you know, strut down the hall in my ministerial credentials, and I'm going to bring joy and encouragement into their life because they got a visit from me. And you step off the elevator and head down the hall and coming down the hall is a very unhospital like sound of laughter. On a couple of occasions, it's been the sound of singing. And you get to the hospital room, and the hospital room already has half the person's life group standing around. And they're praying, singing, praising, and your presence doesn't even matter at all. Because the, the, the people in the room are already doing the hospital visitation and ministry in an amazing way. Now, what's the, the contrast between those two? And again, I don't want to oversimplify, but I think it, it, it paints a picture. You wonder at that abandoned funeral, what was that person planting into the lives of people that this is the harvest? And you wonder, well, you don't have to wonder, in that overpopulated hospital room, what has that person been planting into the lives of those people in that room? Because see what you, what you plant is what you sow. Now, three things about the law of the harvest, just in conclusion. Well, let me show you what the application of the law of the harvest is for the believer. If I press on into verse 9, look at what it says. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Child of God, keep planting. Keep planting planting. I know it seems the harvest is a long way off. I know it seems to be sometimes lonely and misunderstood work. Keep planting. And remember this about the harvest. First thing, just out of the word of God, you're going to reap what you sow. Ultimately, you will reap what you sow. Second, you will reap more than you sow. If all you got for planting a bean in the ground is one bean, nobody would ever be a farmer. You plant a bean in the ground and you get a, a plant that has a bunch of beans on it because you reap more than you sow. You reap what you sow, you reap more than you sow, and you reap later than you sow. That's what this verse is saying. Don't give up. Keep sowing. Keep sowing. The law of the harvest is a warning that if you, if you sow corruption, you'll reap corruption. But more even than that, the law of the harvest is an encouragement. Keep sowing. And by God's grace, in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Hey, thank you for joining us on this episode. I hope that by now you are, you are liking and sharing and inviting others into this little community we have here at Beyond the Notes. Beyond the Notes.